Hello again, everyone. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. <laughs> Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Thanks for joining me on yet another in our ongoing series, Found Footage Fool, here on The Dark Parade. I, of course, am Bo, the gentleman what uh, can't stop watching these found footage movies. And because I recognize the problem <laughs> that, I, that I have with these movies, I endeavor to make some sense of them and, and to try to uh, eke a little bit of uh, additional pleasure out of watching these movies by applying a list of five criteria to these films to determine whether or not they're actually good movies or not. Because sometimes, between you and me, it's hard to tell. I'm, uh, I, I get a little excited by a found footage movie, and I can't tell if it's good or bad, but I've got a, a list of five things here that ought to tell me, uh, is this a good movie or not? And so let us begin with our newest uh, entry into this realm of science. That is, of course, The Dark Tapes from 2016. Uh, it is written and directed by Michael McQuone and Vincent J. Gostani? Gostini? Gostini, I think, is, is probably the correct pronunciation. At any rate, one, one of them guys. And so this is an anthology. And is this the first anthology we've done? Maybe. Because we haven't done the VHS movies yet. Uh, yet. But we certainly will. At any rate... These the the whole deal with the dark tapes is that uh, it it is uh, poised as if this is all uh, sort of arranged by perhaps a demonic entity. What is trying to uh, explain that hey, there before human beings got all scientific and whatnot, there was a whole realm of demons and and so forth, and that this is some proof of that perhaps. Uh, I don't know. It's tough to tell. A, lo a lot of the things about this movie are like, I, I think this is what they're getting at, but I'm not 100% sure. And in fairness, uh, I've said this before, but it's it's certainly more true every day. I'm not that smart a person. So it could be that this movie is doing something that I'm just not aware of. But let, let's get to the five criteria. We've established the fact that this is, in fact, a found footage anthology. There are uh, four stories, I think. There, there's uh, The Hunter and The Hunted, or The Hunted and The Hunter, or ers, uh could be plural. And at any rate, it's a bunch of ghost hunters at, at a haunted house. And then there is the one about a, a lady named Amanda who is getting abducted by aliens and, and also might have psychic powers, but that doesn't ever seem to matter much. Then there is uh, the Cam Girls one, and then there's a, a wraparound story about some people trying to capture, you know, a demon or or at least get proof that there is this entity uh, or entities that exist outside our normal frame of consciousness. And I I, I believe that's all of them. And so the first criteria that we use to judge these movies is, um, is there a good reason in all of these films to keep the camera on? And yeah, I mean, even though there are different reasons, most of them tend to be like, we've got to keep the camera running because we're trying to get proof of whatever. Like the, the one with the alien abduction, uh, she is definitely trying to get proof of w what's going on, what's happening to her. Then there is... The, uh, the ghost hunters one and they have cameras set up everywhere but that makes sense because they're trying to capture ghosts and then you've got the wraparound where they're trying to get proof of this other entity so it makes sense that they've got cameras rolling and then there's the cam girls one which I kind of skipped over because it's the shortest of them it's only about 10 minutes long and it's also kind of the crappiest of them where it's just this girl who is a cam girl uh, along with a friend of hers seducing this guy and then ultimately it turns out whoopsie doodle she's gonna be a demon thanks to this other demon cam girl that she makes out with a little bit and it's kind of nonsense but uh, for 
even with that one, you know, you have a good reason for the camera to to be focused on them. And so criteria number one, keeping the camera on, totally fine. I, I understand the reason for all of that. So well done, dark tapes. Uh, trope number one, you, you got yourself an A+. Uh, number two is characters. Are there characters that we enjoy following? And honestly, not really. Not in any of the segments. The closest I think you get is the character of Amanda in the Alien Abduction one. And even with that guy, even with that story, I should say, the problem with it is that the character was in, you know, sexually assaulted, question mark. And that's sort of what leads to, oh, she can kind of do these psychic things. And also there's... Uh, uh, like some underlying trauma and maybe that's why she believes that she's being abducted by aliens and you know you kind of root for any character like that right that, that's that been through that kind of trauma you're like hey I, ho- I hope everything works out for her um, but beyond that there's really not a character in the movie I mean there are people that do things and say things but you don't really know that much about them and you know, the, with the first, not the wraparound segment, but the, the first segment proper about the ghost hunters, there is some backstory on the parents, but then that turns out to be bullshit. And so I don't know that there's anybody to ever root for in these stories, but, I, you know, I guess with anthologies, even with something like VHS 94, you know, which was the most recent of the VHS films. You know, it's hard to say, like, here's a character that I'm rooting for and I hope survives. Um, It's tough to do in a small amount of time uh, and in, you know, these kind of shorts. But, you know, the best of them do. Uh, You know, I look back at something like Creepshow where, you know, like the, the crate segment, for example. I have a lot of sympathy for Hal Holbrook because they establish pretty quickly that he's this kind of henpecked husband. And his wife is sort of drunk and terrible. Um, Or, you know, even the Leslie Nielsen one. Like, I know he's a dirtbag. And I'm not maybe expressly rooting for Ted Danson in that segment. But I'm definitely rooting against Leslie Nielsen. So, yeah. You know, a lot of times the main characters are just terrible people. and, And you're sort of watching them get their comeuppance. But that's really not the case with most of these and there, there's just not a lot of characterization. So I would say uh, for number two on our list of tropes, uh, it's kind of a failure. Uh, big, big old fat zero on the characters. I don't, I don't think there's really a good character in the bunch. Um, then you get into authenticity, which is, does this feel kind of real? And that's where it's really hit and miss. Uh, I think the Ghost Hunter segment does feel reasonably authentic and has a nice little twist about how you know people who are into ghost hunting are are sort of setting themselves up for disaster because of their lack of skepticism but like the cam girls one i i just don't find uh very compelling or authentic it just feels a a little ramshackle the whole thing it feels kind of cheap um the the abduction story i don't think Yes, it justifies all the camera stuff, but it still doesn't look great. And there's some bad CGI going on with a playing card in that one. Or if it's not CGI, it's just a bad effect with a playing card where it's the main character, Amanda, uh, trying to show off the fact that she's got these psychic powers. And yeah, like I said, kind of a mixed bag on a scale of, of five. I would probably give the authenticity about a two and a half where some of it feels totally fine. Some of it feels a little cheap and shoddy. Um, so it, it's a, a real uh, catch as catch can with the authenticity of the film, uh, which brings us to number four on our list of, of tropes. And that is watchability. Is it uh, a movie that keeps uh, the audience guessing and, and, keeps the audience interested and entertained the entire time. And this is another place where I'm like, this is a real mixed bag. I thought the 
again, I think maybe, <laughs> despite the fact that I think the acting is a little shaky, I think probably my favorite segment is the the alien abduction one, or perhaps the to catch a demon one, which is sort of a, a wraparound. Um, it's one of those two, and even then, I found myself wishing that it would hurry up and, and make its point. The one thing I will say for the watchability side of things is there's an interesting idea at work within the story, which is that demons uh, or these entities or whatever you want to call them, that they live in a, a different plane of existence that operates on a different like temporal frequency. And so like 16 minutes over there equates to one second here. And that's why we can't see them because they're moving at such a, a visual resonance that we just can't ever process their existence. And there's some business about like, oh, we've accidentally thrown ourselves into that dimension. And there's uh, this creature that looks a little bit like, you know, milking drug creature from Naked Lunch, but not quite. And it has more teeth. Uh, and that kind of stuff is interesting. And there are some some ideas in the movie that I think are kind of compelling. But, boy, that cam girl one is just a real slog to get through. The alien abduction one feels overlong as well. There's some spinning of the tires there. And also, I just don't think that the fact that the character has these psychokinetic abilities ever matters in the story i don't know why it's in in the the script because it's not like she uses that to free herself from the the alien abductions she just sets up a trap and then it, the trap goes off and they leave her alone you know it, it, it's very frustrating and even with all this kind of business with the, at the beginning and the end of of these uh the voice of the creature of the demon saying like you know we are going to d teach humanity that we are we still exist and all that stuff it's like eh, fine i wish there were more of that kind of overarching idea that you know maybe human beings have, have gotten so scientific that we've lost our ability to feel you know an almost religious kind of awe at at some of these creatures but it never really gets there. There's some twist endings uh, going on in almost all of these stories, none of which are very good. Um, it's really just a bummer of, of a found footage anthology because I think there is a great anthology to be made using found footage. And when I go back and revisit those VHS films, maybe that's when, you know, I'll sort of discover like, oh yeah, this one, it turns out is really good. Um, you know, like all anthologies are mixed bags, but this one in particular, I felt was uh, more more bad than good. So the watchability is pretty pretty low. Uh, it took me a couple of times to get through it, um, just because I kept losing interest in it. Quite frankly, it just wasn't it, it, like it. I would stop watching it, and then would have to convince myself to go back and finish it, and then when I did, I was left really unimpressed. Um, and you may ask yourself then, why not just not finish it? You're not compelled to do this. Oh, contraire. When I start a movie, it's, it's rare as the film that I do not actually finish once I start it. So anyway, that, that brings us to our fifth and final, uh, criteria to measure a found footage film against. And that is, is it scary or are, are there any good scares in, in this? And no, the, it, it's not creepy. It's not scary. Um, the, when they get close to that with the, the kind of old alternate dimension demon monster, then it, that part of it tends to be a little overused. I found where it's no longer creepy. It's just like you start to see the seams on the costume a little bit and you're like, Oh, it would have been better if you just showed me little flashes of this and kept most of this hidden from me. And I think I would have been a little more frightened of, of the movie 
um, or of the events of the film. So yeah, I, again, I just don't think that it's all that good, which is a shame. Um, but uh, that leaves us with uh, an evaluation of the film as a whole, which is you know we've we've run it through the list of five criteria. It's not scary. The watchability is kind of low. It, the authenticity and characters are real hit and miss, mostly miss. Uh, the one thing it's really got going for it is that it it knows to keep the camera on and gives a good reason for doing so. But you know when you're talking about a found footage anthology, there there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. Uh, a lot of fun stuff that I could imagine a found footage anthology bringing to the table. And there are some interesting ideas, but it never really executes on those ideas all that well. Uh, so I'm going to land at, this might even be generous, but I'm going to land at about a two for the dark tapes. Two out of five uh, for this time around on found footage fool. So um, that's going to do it. There's no reason to linger, ladies and jelly spoons. Uh, I would not recommend the dark tapes. If you have seen the dark tapes and have a differing opinion, uh, by all means, let me know over in the Facebook group uh, for the dark parade, or you can hit me up on Twitter at, uh, at dark parade pod. Uh, if you would like to continue this discussion elsewhere. Um, and you can also, of course, uh, drop me a line anytime at Bo B O at Legion And, uh, with that being said, thank you very much for listening to these bonus episodes. I really do enjoy doing them, even though that the dark tapes was a bit of a bummer of a movie. I, I still have a good time, uh, recording these and watching these found footage movies. And it makes me feel a little bit better to have something to show for the fact that I've watched the dark tapes, uh, namely this episode. So, uh, have a great weekend coming up and uh thanks as always for supporting the dark parade you guys are the absolute best this will be dropping on new year's eve so have a wonderful new year's eve and uh i will uh talk to you more in the new year so here's to 2022 folks see you then <laughs>